good evening once again all the educators respected educators from different parts of the country and i'm so happy that uh, we are here today to discuss or to conduct an uh, webinar on this particular topic which is very important school health and wellness good evening uh, niharika ma'am good evening to all the respected educators i will just go through the okay thank you snigdha ma'am rashmi ma'am manju ma'am nikita ma'am nitika ma'am preeti ma'am florence ma'am good evening good evening shivani ma'am shri vijaya ma'am good evening rupinda ma'am good evening good evening to kavaljeet ma'am good evening and welcome to the webinar thank you so much anuradha ma'am thank you a uh, good evening kanchan ma'am good evening ritu ma'am anjana ma'am sadia ma'am all of you a good evening to everybody and thank you for joining today's webinar and i really want to know ki what is uh, why did you why do you think that this particular topic is very important and been given so much of importance by our nep also any idea you can write or you can unmute and you can say i hope you you will be able to mute unmute yourself okay anyone why school health is important for a student for the students why is it important okay no problem i'll be sharing my screen with you all good mental health and physical health yes ma'am very nicely said ma'am uh, niharika ma'am shivani ma'am mental health and physical health is very important for fruitful learning very well said how nicely you have put sangeeta ma'am very nice health issues are there in children and now uh, in nowadays yes and after corona the students they really want to sit at one place and they do are not engaged in the uh, any physical activity yes overall environment is in important thank you sadia ma'am thank you you have all put everybody is right everybody you have given wonderful comments and your thoughts on this particular topic thank you so much for being there yes for overall development of students signa ma'am thank you for kan ma'am for all development of child means overall very nice so let's jump i uh, be there uh, in this meeting shri vijaya ma'am very nicely said ensures the child's growth and development yes absolutely correct puna ma'am is saying physical and mental health both are important because a sound mind in a sound body for harmonious development yes very nice very well said by all the respected educators and let me introduce myself uh, some students feel shy to discuss with their parents and friends as educators we are putting our foot forward to help them yes because a child is giving his lot of proactive time in the school thank you nilu ma'am and uh, thank you everybody shilpa ma'am rightly said for overall growth so now let's move into the topic namaste ma'am everybody everybody my namaste to everybody now this is my small introduction i am dr shardha chakravarti aif ef global ambassador a pgt biology a career counselor i have not written here career counselor a life coach a graphologist and i also have my own uh, small establishment which is called golden future career and counseling so this is my small introduction and i want to pay my gratitude to matthew sir for bringing us all together and giving us fruitful experiences with each webinar so today now let us discuss what this particular workshop and what may be our outputs and what is my objective as very well said by all of you the that there is means uh, the wellness a uh, school health and wellness is important because it's very important that a child 
should be have has a holistic development okay to promote a holistic approach to our students well-being and main our objective today is to understand the component of school health and wellness and we have to discuss the strategies for its implementation see we take many um, workshops many many uh, webinars are going on we uh, we attend lot of offline and online workshops but actually what is the main how we can actually help is by implementing if all of us implement one or two points whatever will, will be discussed today it will be a great thing uh, that um, our school will be and our students will be benefited with it so they are very simple very very simple things i have uh, discussed today with this so about the definition of school health and wellness what is it so school health and wellness it represents rep refers to comprehensive approach everything is included we know what is the definition of health by who it's uh, social okay physical mental development of a child holistic the so comprehensive the physical health mental health and social well-being of students and it uh, the full actually this it uh, it moves around actually like you know physical in, in, uh, fitness good food mental health support and therefore i think we all agree that a, a counselor is important and is a very integral part of any school um, curriculum or any school set setup so mental health support a social connection and a safe learning environment in last uh, few workshop i told you if the learning environment is very very safe the productivity of child increases and they become more successful and most important the schools are not only the school buildings it is actually made up of our beloved students okay so the students well being is the most important thing and with the help of the students holistic uh, well being we can uh, make a difference in his academic performance his attendance of course he will love to come to school because if the environment is safe he is being heard and as a result what will happen what we love you know we love our students success whenever one student uh, you know calls you up or send you a message ma'am i have cracked my net exam or ma'am i ha have been selected i have uh, in uh, my joint advance or i have uh, got a job in a bank or i have got admission in iim or i have become an uh, upsc officer how could you feel you feel that as if you have achieved something so that is the uh, the our uh, uh, this you know what should we say our bank asset these the children are our asset not for our school it will not only bring good name for our school but also the development of our country that is the long term goal i think about and now when we talk about the when we talk about the physical health so anyone uh, what is the physical health what do you mean what is that why physical health is important because if a child is physically fit you yourself you see if like you're coming to school and you are not well you're suffering from headache or like for me it's uh, mostly which troubles me is my uh, cold i have a very bad cold and the fever also doesn't make like it, i am not scared of fever also. there will be lack of i'm scared of my cold because if i get this infection i my whole body goes here and there and i'm not going i'm not able to give my 100% in the class my no, nose blocks and i'm not able to speak properly and my this thing uh, my throat it becomes very sore so i cannot give my 100% in my classroom and i try to stay at home for 2 to 3 days so that i am not transferring this uh, infection to other people in the staff room or in the school 
So if I'm not 100% physically fit, how will I be able to teach? How will I be able to give my 100% in the classroom? Similarly, if the child's physical health is not good, he is having some problem in his phys physical body. So what will happen? It will affect the academic performance. Sometimes the children, they don't even say like what has actually happened. So like, you know, we, as a, you look at, look at yourself. Like, for example, I was having pain at my, uh, at my you know, just uh, near uh, the back uh, spinal cord, backbone. So I never realized. Like, I just used to take the medicines and uh, like painkillers. And then uh, the things used to be all right. And we put a hot water bag. And the situation used to be uh, good for a few days. And again, that, that pain. And I used to keep on neglecting, keep on neglecting about my pain. What my body was giving, the body was giving me some, a signal that something is wrong, but I was not taking, taking it seriously. But one day I had a severe pain and then I had to go to doctor and doctor advice for it, ultrasound. And then I found I had a kidney stone, which I didn't, I, which I ignored for a long time. Maybe I, if I would have been more conscious I would have uh, given it um, given it more importance. So similarly, the children they are not aware like how they are their physical health is not well. So we should give more importance. And if we find the child is sleeping in the class or often going to the washroom, sometimes they go for uh, some other purpose also, like they want to disturb the teacher. But seriously, if like they are doing going to often to the sick room, you should talk. To their parents like what is the like is the same thing happening at home also so it has been uh, uh, studies has been conducted in cdc center for disease control and prevention that reg regular physical activity can help to increase your brain power attention and classroom behavior so we should always give importance to the physical health by offering physical education classes for giving, sending the students for sports activities, for active transportation, for example, like walking, uh, taking a cycle, uh, cycle, coming to school uh, in their cycle, or even if they cannot come to school, if the distance is too long, they can go for small places like near to, uh, to their tuition places or to the shop. My 14 uh, year old son, he goes to his tuition uh, by his bicycle. I told him, he like uh, you do some activities because his school is very far. He cannot go to school in his uh, bicycle, but for small distances, he is using his bicycle. So in this way, uh, at least he is involved in his activities. Some activities are there. So at least with the tuition, I have associated this cycle, bicycle. So now he has to go to tuition. It is compulsory. Now when he goes to tuition, he has to take the cycle. That is also compulsory. And also uh, by having nutrition school meals, some schools, they provide food. Like in my son's school, they provide lunch by paying some fees, but there are many sco schools which do not do it, uh, provide it. So by uh, telling the students why good food is important for them. And even if like you have a canteen, you can ask your canteen person to have, give them nutritious food, which is good for them. Like, you know, I think like the idlis and all, they are very good because they are not oily. Even the sandwiches, if they are there, they should be made, they should be freshly made. And all these points should be kept in uh, in your mind and also like when you are like in uh, we in our school uh, we have uh, this system like uh, we during the different time uh, we actually are in the few teachers are in the corridor and sometimes we just peep in but the students they have they are bringing and like that we can advise the children in this way you can take care so now when we come to the uh, this uh, uh, data it has been found that if those people, they do 43.2% uh, pe people, uh, it was found that they were exercising and these people, they uh, had better mental health than those people who did not, who were not uh, doing exercises. So are you understanding how exercise is very important because 
whole your body circulation, blood circulation becomes better. Your brain cells, all the cells of your body are getting good amount of oxygen. And uh, do you know, uh, like a very, a very small thing I want to share with you. Do, uh, we all know we are here. Most of us are mother or we have seen children born in our family or to some relatives like this. Do you know if the child does not cry immediately after the birth, is it a good sign or a bad sign? Anyone who knows this? If the child is not crying no. immediately after the sign. birth, bad sign. It's what a bad actually sign. happens? It's a bad sign. Yes, bad Vita, sign. Ma what is actually bad happening when the child is not crying broken. immediately? You know, the, child, the doctor pats at the back and makes the child cry. That is only one cry where the mother becomes very happy. That is the only cry of their child, which makes the mother very happy. And why is it so? Anyone has any idea? Because the child is crying. Thank you, Rima. So uh, why? Kate. That is the only uh, cry which makes the tried, mother so very happy. Uh, when yes, the child, child, child is fine. And that the means oxygen, the lungs are lungs, fun, Because uh, when the child is in the mother's womb, the mother is doing the function. The mother is doing that function of the uh, breathing and removing the waste, everything is done by the mother's blood actually. Now, now, when the child is born and the child, when the child cries, the lungs open and the blood, you know, the oxygen, the blood start moving and the oxygen is carried to the brain. So it is said that if the, yes, and if the child uh, cries after the after fractions of second also after fractions of second also um, the cells of the brain gets damaged a very good uh, very means uh, i should i want to ex i want to tell one example here what happened uh, one of my uh, colleague his son was studying in a different school not in our school he was studying in a different school and that school had given actually that child a lot of pressure. Uh, the, uh, that child was very good. He got 10 CGPA. It was the time of that CCE pattern. He got 10 CGPA in his 10 board and his mother changed the school to a different school. This child always had a dream to become an engineer, become an engineer. So this child was working hard for his goal. Suddenly, the child in class uh, 11, um, after the half year lease, he lost his interest in his studies. He lost, he lost all his interest. And now he was avoiding. So his mother did not understand and she was a pressurizing study. And then uh, they were called in the school by the principal and then they asked her, Ki please, uh, you should visit a doctor. Uh, so she went and met a counselor. What actually is happening? So remember, after uh, like 16, uh, 14, uh, 16 years, a doctor asked her one question. Did your son cried immediately after the birth? Then she realized no, my son did not cry immediately after the birth. The child took little time to cry. And in that moment, the cells, few cells were damaged. And you know, the neurons, once damaged, they cannot uh, multiply and then they cannot uh, replace. Now it's possible by stem therapy, stem cell therapy. It's a totally different case. So that child lost all his balance because of the pressure. Because of the pressure. There was so huge pressure, no play, nothing. And they were only asked to study. They were not given any sort of PT classes, no entertainment, only eight periods they were supposed to study. And do you know? that child 
as soon as the exam, his class 12 exam was over, he packed all his science book and he told his mother, take them out of my sight. I don't want to see these books also. The hatred started. And then he pursued BA in English. And today, of course, he's doing well. But that pressure, which his mother also forgot after like my child, did he cry or late or as soon as he was born? So are you understanding how important it is? I hope uh, you like the story. And it's a real yes, story. It's a real yes, story. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now we will move into the mental health. So I told you here how physical health is related with the mental health. Because if you're physically you're fit, always remember a, a disease, uh, a disease, if your body is diseased, your mind also become thinking like this. It's a vice versa. If your mind is uh, get, getting negative effects, your body will also show the negative signs. Okay. So there was a report in National Institute of Mental Health. It says that one in five children and adolescents, they experience mental health challenge. So it's very, very, uh, very, very challenging for all of us to know as an educator to understand what is actually happening. So this is the main uh, problem because we are not equipped like that. We were equipped for a different sort of strategy till now. We were following different type of education policy where our main focus was only on curriculum. So thanks to this NEP 2020, which is focusing on holistic development. So we can, uh, like uh, today, I think all of us in our school, it is mandatory to do some uh, exercises early in the morning. So we do some, hand, because uh, I am also a graphologist, so I tell them many uh, my, my mind exercises. So these exercises I teach in my class. Uh, I think I'll take one class on this also to teach how you can balance your right and left brain. So that is very important because uh, always uh, just think, just tell me, if like uh, how long how long can you walk with your one leg oh my god sangeeta ma'am very sorry to hear this very sorry to hear this very sad so now i have a question for uh, everybody how long can you walk with your one leg langri tang khelte the na bachpan mein to kitna dur ja sakte hain how long you can go how far you can go uh, with one leg. Yes, very good. Gurvinda ma'am, 10 steps, yeah, very short distance. And uh, Langri Tang mein, like we used to uh, walk and, and we used to feel so tired, very short distance. And what about when you walk with your two legs? Two legs, like the way we are walking, how, how far you can go? Yes. Long distance, people, they go for tracking, people, they go for Mount Everest, anywhere they are going. Isn't it? So, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for your active participation. Similarly, but what are we doing? We are only using our only one brain. Anybody has idea which part of our brain we use mostly? Yes, left brain. very good. Left brain, left brain. So when we are walking with one leg, we can't go far. Similarly, if we are walking with one, one part of our brain, can we become more productive? When we are going with our left path, we are because most of us, we are logical. So do you know our right side and left side should be balanced. We are not using our right side. And do you know, when we don't use a part of our brain, what happens? That part slowly, slowly shrinks because we are not working. So our brain, both the parts of our brain should be 
well balanced and thank you for these beautiful patterns on the on the screen please uh, if possible if you really um, will erase it it will look more beautiful i know the colors are very pretty matching with my slides the green and yellow thank you so much yes sangeeta ma they should be balanced and we have to see that because if you you yourself you don't know how are you going to balance your students today i can use my left and right brain with equal amount with equal um, effort chalo chachu ke paas chalo done it with mindful exercise daud ke nahi jana you can tell your students that how you can help them you can help only when you know the mind exercises counseling services awareness campaign like today you know that people they are coming out it was a stigma people they never used to come and tell like they are suffering from mental problems people used to think them you know they are mad but now the stars like um, deepika deepika padukone she came out with her own mental problem so it is a very common when your body physically you can be uh, be unfit sometimes not giving your 100% so brain can also be um, not be working with your full potential so there can be some problem there can be some root cause there can be a root cause which has become a tree so we have to remove that Yeah, okay. and uh, so when okay. I, ever, like, i because being a life coach whenever i talk to a student i tell them ki uh, i have got plans all over the country excuse so me ma'am i always tell them whatever we are talking my dear it's very confidential i'm not going to share your whatever you say to me to your parents also so when i have to discuss with their parents i talk in a very different way otherwise the child excuse will me, lose uh, sharta ma'am trust on me excuse me ma'am please mute excuse me ma'am uh, so mental health excuse is me, a positive concept because it is actually what the emotions you know uh, uh, everything starts with a small thought everything starts with a small thought and then we make it big we make it big we make it so big so big so big that we are surrounded by it and we become the prisoner inside our belief we start believing so always remember ki uh, students whenever you are talking to them it should be very safe and you should always make it very confidential do not share what the child is sh sharing with you with all the teachers in the staff room don't tell and even if you want to share or make anyone aware about it just give an example like a neighbor's son or a neighbor's daughter like this they don't know who is your neighbor who is your relative so don't disclose the name of that child otherwise what happens that child is um, seen as like you know is a mane mental mental patient so this is the thing so you should be very very empathetic and always be uh, conf confidential with all these uh, things okay let me read Tisha, ma, please, ah, uh, please mute yourself, if possible. Actually, I am not ah uh, able to see. I think everybody has. Okay, now everyone is on mute. Thank you. So now you, I think, ah, uh, all all of you are enjoying the session. Is it? Yes, are you all enjoying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. thank you thank you so very much yes so this uh, actually we get to know when we are thank you so much for uh, acknowledging because we really want to be be productive actually it should not be a simple uh, webinar you attend and you forget you have so many stories to share you can share stories with your students with your Uh, for awareness you share your the story of that's not of course you can share the story but make it anonymous because you know what happens um when we ever we have a new class now uh, the new session starts the previous teacher says ha huh, please be aware of this child this child is such a notorious person child he will make your life hell 
And if you go with this type of attitude, you will never be able to success. And you will never be able to make a rapport. Uh, they, um, uh, um, because I take, uh, I have a great rapport with each one of my students, each one of my students. And that I will also teach you in my repo classes, like how to um, be, make a rapport with students. And I have a rapport, good rapport with everyone, everyone, because I have learned it. And I'm learning, I'm an ardent learner. I keep on learning new, new things. Today also, I had a, a very fruitful class with my own life coach. I'm a life coach. I also have a life coach. So I have, I had a fruitful class and his, uh, still his class is going on, but I'll be seeing the recording. I attended his class till five o'clock. Then he went for his another session and I had session, this session. So now social health. Because school is a social place. We are a social animal. So always remember the social connections and positive relation are also essential for the student. If the environment, if the, if the social conditions, environment is not good, then the child every day is coming in the class and he's being bullied. And for, what that child will feel? Will he be, be safe in that, in that condition? Will he be able to express? Sometimes, you know, what the students, they do, they target few students, the target. And every time everything goes wrong, that child has to be blamed because the 10 students are saying something against that child. And teachers also believe sometimes because they are not in the class all the time. We also believe the 10 students together, they are saying. So maybe that child is targeted. He's being bullied and he's not able to express try to understand their, their state of mind. Try to understand what that child wants to say. There was a child and there is always a child in a class. So I used to teach uh, that time class, uh, I think it was class nine. So there was a student, whenever this child used to say something, others used to start laughing at him. Okay, whatever, single sentence he was saying, they were laughing. And uh, I observed this particular, because I used to go for three days a week, I was teaching biology. So I used to go thrice a week. And then I started understanding that this child is being bullied by some uh, students. And then I did not say anything who was bullying and the children, I did not say them anything. What did I do? I, I do this thing. And the, after two, three weeks, I just went and I said, uh, I have a very favorite student in this class. The most favorite student of this class is XYZ. Okay, that student's name. And because I am considered as a very strict teacher and a teacher who really works on values and morals and I have my own uh, a, a code of conduct. I have this, you know, very strong values. So, to students, they are very scared of me when it's in the classroom. So, when I said this XYZ is my most favorite student, what happened? From that day itself, and that boy was, uh, you know, ne no, never in his life he heard this. That's any teacher called him his or her favorite student. And now he's not in the school anymore. He is in the college, but till he stayed in the school till class 12, he used to come to me and used to say, thank you, ma'am, for changing my life. The boy who was shy was never able to express. This child became so very bubbly. And like whenever, Something used to go wrong in the class. He used to tell, let Shraddha ma'am come. I will tell her. And everybody used to say sorry to him. So this boy who, who nobody listened, nobody believed, I believed. So always remember. Sometimes they are not able to say because these students who are bullied, they are very powerful also. So always remember, have a creative sense of belonging. Always have a good relationship. 
because you know if you are able to change one student's life with apart from curriculum you are teaching but something apart from that you will feel so happy and when you will get the messages na your uh, this thing tears will come will roll so always remember always work very uh, with a with a feeling that i have done something good today every day i make it a point three good things i'll do every day and i commit i don't know what will be the outcome i just don't uh, wait for the outcome but when your intentions are good you are going to get 100x from where you don't know so always remember so when i was searching for a platform i got this beautiful platform from a friend of mine she introduced to me uh, to matthew so and in this way i became a resource person i became a global ambassador of aief school environment is again very important because it, of course it impacts health and wellness of a child and research have already shown that if there is a supportive physical environment positively it influences the child behavior just think of it you coming from a different family i'm talking about the ladies you come from a protective very protective family you come suddenly you come after your marriage you come to another family and there if you get positive environment how good you will feel whatever you are doing they are encouraging you whatever they are doing they are engaging you see this is my daughter in law she uh, she is a teacher let's ask her how good you will feel getting involved in everything of a new family where everybody is giving you uh, attention they are valuing your each and every idea isn't it so similarly if the child is given a good environment engaged and of course he is coming for academic achievement but you have to add on in his development by giving him very supportive and safe environment and school should take this very very uh, because teachers can do school have to do this cleaning facilities lighting is there and na nature means there are plants around their school or in near the corridors or wherever like they are well maintained playgrounds so that it all gives them the best learning environment when the child is going and is seeing the let's start with the kg students when they because the students they join in kg classes or they uh, join in class 11 the school they come and they want they are coming for their admission and they see the beautiful well maintained school the there are playgrounds there are um, act, activity area where they can do it so in this way what will happen the child becomes see think about yourself you want to go to a picnic okay so will you like to go in a deserted place no tree no greenery all buildings would you love there tell me you want like it because all of us we like greenery we even if we don't have space we have whatever small space we have we put our green plants there we put indoor plants because they give us a sense of relaxation am i right or not tell me i think all of you you have if you have a good uh, by god's grace if you have a backyard or a garden you have planted lot of trees your garden will not be like you know just deserted or if you live in a flat like me you have a good a few uh, flower pots in your in your flat isn't it wherever like in multi uh, in uh, metro cities we are yes very right thank you ma'am because when you get inside your house and you see these green plants your they make your day you love it so similarly the students when they come to school and the school environment is so healthy green uh, playground 
beautiful colorful activity area plants in the corridor how beautiful it looks so the school environments become very very positive are you all there with me if like are you there with me yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, just why if you cannot write yes oh thank you kavaljit ma'am yes 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 ma'am Jemmy, ma'am, thank you. Redmi, Naine, Manisha, ma'am, Nilu, ma'am, Anjana, ma'am, Gurvinda, ma'am, Gur, Gurdevinder, ma'am, Rima, ma'am. Oh, some I cannot read the call, ma'am. Thank you so much for your acknowledgement. Otherwise, you know, it becomes like I'm speaking to uh, the screen. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for your acknowledgement. Okay, Bella, uh, Bella, ma'am, thank you. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Sumira, Sumira, ma'am, Rupinda, ma'am. Thank you so much for your acknowledgement, and I'm happy that you are enjoying the uh, this thing. And therefore, I have made this beautiful, colorful um, PPTs. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Niharika, ma'am, Sumbul, ma'am. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's start with our next one. so this is the school environment it should be just you know try to relate with yourself and you will think because empathy thinking of putting yourself in other shoes just think like if i like this the children will also like it like being a biology teacher sometimes i give the activity to my students so two two things happen together when uh, what one is um, best out of waste and these green plants they come together and uh, they make it and they bring it and then we just uh, decorate the class with the, these green plants and the class look uh, classroom looks very good but now as i am teaching only the senior classes so it becomes little because the senior students they are really uh, they like to do different they like to work for marks nothing else so now when we talk about health education so it's very very important for to promote awareness about the health and health doesn't mean that only your no, health means everything overall overall okay mental health physical health social health everything together so a who emphasizes that the health education should be integrated uh with the curriculum see if even if you are uh, not a biology teacher whatever subject teacher you are just you know try to use it uh i was a, i'm a biology teacher uh, but i have told my students about this uh, famous uh, technique of uh, like a japanese technique so japanese technique is that i uh, two things i collaborated two things i collaborated so i said how many students want to be good in uh, mathematics so the answer you know will be 100% 100% students are weak in maths and 100% students even those who are good in maths they want to be better so everybody raised their hands okay ma'am i want to be good in maths i said are you promising me you have to promise me they said yes ma'am so what i said now two things together okay one maths and one water water is very good for our health everyone knows it even children they know as a parent we know but we forget to drink water in between yes or no so what i did i collaborated i collaborated japanese technique to my students i said it is a proven technique by japanese people they have done research on it if you drink water in between doing maths problems you will get better in mathematics okay this seed i sowed in their brain what was the seed if you drink water with uh, while doing your maths problem sums or doing maths exercises you will become good in maths okay and i told them and i forgot also 
and suddenly the exam came and the students they did bang on the students who were uh, used to fail they managed to pass and then i said how oh, this miracle happened they told me ma'am you remember you told us uh, while doing maths you have to drink water and then we used to do competition with our with our friends uh, and to see that whether we are doing going in a right track or not and we found ma'am you really said us a very very good thing and now what happened they were drinking water their body toxins were going out and because of this their retention power was increasing and also they were exercise they were practicing so so you know you just add the same with your uh, maths and water so two things collaborated so what happened the students they started drinking water their mother did not uh, were not taking any like you know pain in uh, asking their children to drink water after every hour they were drinking it so in this way so now we have to provide health education and skills necessary like i told you just whatever you read because we gain everything let me see what are they saying thank you bhupinder ma'am thank you thank you so much yes a very good idea i give so good ideas to my students and everybody like in the school also they know ki like uh, my ideas are very very spontaneous and very you know accurate so you can do it give nutrition personal hygiene sexual health and mental well being see this particular um, sexual health we are very very shy when we discuss this we are we indians are very shy but isn't it very strange we are shy when we talk about the sexual health but we are not shy when we became the most populated country in the world without the knowledge of sexual health and feeling it uh, comfortable speaking in front of a student or our own children we have become the most populated country in the world but the country where they speak about the sexual health with their students and their children they are not so populated isn't it an irony we speak so less about this most important topic and that's the reason our children get engaged with some other things because they want to know about themselves what is happening to them especially the boys at least the women the mothers they are talking to their girls about their menstrual cycle but the boys they are not told about the physical what the physical changes they are going to experience so that is a very very an irony where we feel ashamed of talking about the sexual health with our student and our children and then we become the most populated country in in the world so i will ask thank you so much ma'am yes very very why why we are feeling ashamed why why are we feeling shy to tell our students i keep on telling i don't tell it in this way to my students but i tell them indirectly i tell them indirectly when i'm teaching the reproductive health or the reproduction in human uh, in uh, human beings i keep on telling because you have to either give them why they are doing it because why they are looking to different type of uh, um, materials either in youtube or somewhere else where they will go how they will know so it's their it's mother's duty i told my son when he was in class 5 about slowly little bit because when he was in class 5 my daughter was in class 8 and she had her uh cycle started at that particular age and my son wanted to know so i told him about the menstrual cycle and how it is so very normal why the, there are many states where they celebrate when the child when the daughter starts her first cycle why because it's normal she is normal so 
why not to tell give your son knowledge about the um, uh, uh, the female body and his own body i i told him you will be experiencing the same thing when you will go to puberty age and it will not be the way your sister is having for 3 to 4 days and when he had his first time when he grew up he had he was very very uh, normal and i said congratulations my dear son you are 100% normal boy so do it tell them how they will know daughters mothers are saying what about son they will learn no it's my uh, humble request being a teacher being a mother you should educate your son also at an early age because when he they become big it's become little um difficult to explain so when i talk with them i am with my students i said i tell them there are many things which are natural and it looks good when it is natural but if it becomes unnatural what happens the most frequent cancer in male is the prostate gland cancer so when the things goes in a very unnatural way apart from being natural cycle natural things if it becomes unnatural so of course you are going against your body so they are very smart and they get a little scared and then they study about it and they understand so we have to give them age appropriate evidence based health education so that they become you know develop healthy habits and they empower themselves mentally physically and socially so i hope in this way you try to give attendance link ma'am there is no attendance link or uh, sujata ma'am there is a a uh, link uh, which will come to you in your respective groups where you have to uh, put on your details to get your uh, certificates ma'am i hope is it clear thank you uh, nitika ma'am thank you so much because i love this because i have got so plenty of stories being uh, in a different field in different type of work i have got to know so meet so many uh, people students and i'm very near to them and always in coaching career counseling graphology so this brings me very very near to the students and the parents staff training and support is very important because the school is not only made up of the building the principal teachers students they are also made up of uh, the the staff means in the staff we can include us uh, as a teacher and also the other support support staff so they sh there should be a, pro a training a health related training like the way you are going uh, you are you have come here so there should be a training about this to the teachers and the staff see the teachers they are attending this webinars but what about the staff they are not attending any webinar so they should also be given a lesson a given workshops on uh, this school uh, health and uh, well be wellness of the students and how because they are also the important stakeholders and these type of uh, programs should be there and the health related topics should be all uh, very often they will the awareness should be made and because they are also there we are there they are also there to support the students well being and uh, the school should provide of course they always provide workshop seminars online platforms for the professional development like the way you are doing it and you are getting certificates which you are showing to the school and um, the cbsc which they have made it mandatory 50 hours training and the staff should be you know staff well being and creating a positive school culture what will happen it will all help in the growth of whom the students so we all are working for the students so in this way because today you have learned so many things if you go and tell your uh, teachers and you tell them like i i attended these uh, webinars and this is my input from here and we can also apply this in our school see a small thing 
but whatever it is not that you have to take 100 and put all 100 no even if you start with baby steps it will be very very good you can uh, tell ma'am your principal ma'am or any authority that yes we should take uh, some um, classes like this for our support uh, support staff also so that they also understand about the um, wellness of a student because sometimes the, the staff is also not that much trained so now the next stakeholders are the parents and the community community means the society they should also be involved so like parents if like you're seeing something odd in the school like you know what happened uh, let me tell you a very this thing uh, sad story also i uh, heard it through my one of my friend and uh, that friend uh, she's also a teacher so in her school she noticed that uh, there are there were two good friends okay one was from a very good family and the other was not that good means very low income um, background okay so, but the, they were very good friends so um, they used to stay together and uh, in the evening uh, after the school the car used to come to pick up this and this boy used to go uh, alone by his uh, like by foot and all like walking so one uh, one uh, one day what happened this uh, the rich boy started uh, money, uh, he was he fell a uh, very unsick very sick sorry uh, very sick and he stayed at his home and everything went you know like uh, um, she told me this later on so at home now this boy was telling to his parents that he wants to go to school he cannot miss the school he has to go to school but he was not in that condition to go to school. He was not in the condition to go to school. So doctors advise that he will should not be uh, should not go to school. He should take proper uh, rest and all everything. But they um, then this boy was very very adamant that he wants to go to school. But anyway, he did not come. And then they started observing uh, some strange. Uh, uh, changes in his uh, their son uh, son's body uh, physical um, you know the boy was becoming very tight and all and they got very scared they called the doctor and they, he was immediately transferred to the hospital he had to be hospitalized and then the doctor uh, said oh, what happened like what, um, what what do you give him in the food in the like what he eats so they told like he eats very healthy food and all everything okay and uh, then uh, then he's the, the doctor said no 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 he is having something else so um, then they uh, he's, they said no 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 we give him this food only and uh, rest of the time he eats with us only he not, never like we don't uh, when we want to go out we he's there with us we eat everything we eat same so no he said um, you have to go and ask the school also in the school so they went to the school and came to the class teacher and the class teacher told yes these two children uh, they come sit always sit together the teacher then went to the classroom and asked the other students about uh, the those that boy and the other boy so they said ma'am um, these and uh, the that rich boy he never uh, ate his tiffin he always gave his tiffin to this uh, the other one and he ate his tiffin in the school they interchanged the tiffin okay and then um, teacher became little suspicious so she told um, that uh, the doc uh, the parents parents went home went to the doctor and said next day and they told he like you know he was having his friend's tiffin he was not having his own tiffin the doctor said do you know your child is drugged the child was given drugs in his tiffin, in his food. They said, how this is possible? The small child. Then they went again and they told all the everything to the principal. Principal called this uh, child. And then what this child said, the child said, I used, I loved this other boy's tiffin and I wanted, I always tempted to have his tiffin. So I used to add this medicine 
because he was living in a very low income grade community where these things were very common so i used to mix this food and that boy other boy was used to love my uh, this very low grade food also because of that because that boy became addicted he didn't know that the he was giving drugs so what i want to say with this then that boy um, got treatment and uh, his parents changed the school also so this is the thing so sometimes we have to be very very conscious like uh, our child is taking food uh, because my daughter will be going outside uh, uh, like after her class 12 in coming uh, in the month of september she will be joining and only one thing i tell her he like if you go outside do not accept any food until unless you are seeing it do not accept any cold drinks until unless you have your own hands you have your own feet go there you have your legs go and take the sealed one and drink it don't take any from anyone you don't know what is in others person mind so always we have to be very very um, particular like as a community as a parents parents have to come and they should like if the child is sleeping in the class for long hours huh, what is happening actually i found one student who used to sleep after uh, this thing you know after um, tiffin time tiffin time he used to sleep and i was very very tense like why this boy is sleeping i called his parents i said what is the reason what are you giving him so they told me uh, this food uh, whatever the paratha and the sandwiches and all i said apart from that apart from that they used to give him uh, this glucon d in the morning they used to make glucon d in a bottle and used to send him uh, send that bottle with him and that boy used to drink uh, that uh, glucon d and uh, after uh, like you know do you know uh, after like what happens to glucon d it's glucose the fermentation starts the fermentation starts and it start converting into alcohol mild alcohol and the child was sleeping so we have to be very very conscious like what is happening actually so in this way uh, there should be uh, regular checkups parents education workshop and community of course the society should be uh, also be given awareness about this and in this way when we get engagement from the parents and the whole community the network becomes very good and the child starts a development okay ma'am attendance link again i'm saying ma'am ashilpa ma'am there is no attendance link ma'am there is no attendance link so what have we concluded from today's uh, webinar that school health and wellness is a very integral part for nurturing students for a better future and if we give importance uh, to physical mental and social well being so what will happen the student is coming for the of course academic so his academic performance will increase his health problems will decrease and his will promote healthy habits like just uh, give this anchor water and maths so they will now whenever they are practicing they will drink water so two things the water their intake becomes more and their maths becomes better because they are practicing and now when the other students say ki i have got uh, good results the other students oh he has got or she has got the good result then why why not me i will also get the good result so just you know promote it and Uh, it is essential for collaboration of all the stakeholders to give the supportive environment for our students beloved students and in this way we can make change in our students life and so that they can thrive uh, academically and per uh, personally so they can become the best version of their and they can they can become uh, better and better so you can take the screenshot you can take uh, this uh, take talks you can listen in the uh, in the in the youtube you can listen in the youtube and these are the very very nice videos and the good books which you can go through and ask your students to read it 
ask your students uh, to uh, listen to them, listen to these videos in the YouTube. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, for your today's attendance. Attendance link will be given to you in the group, wherever, whichever group you have joined from, uh, from, you will get the link from there. And you can, of course, join from uh, whatever groups you have joined, you will get the links and just hold on for a second. And uh, anybody wants to say anything about today's session? Ma'am, the session was wonderful and eye-opener. Are you all was... there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you all there with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you yes, mute yourself? Actually, I yes, can't. You. you can fill this uh, Google form. Can you all, uh, can anybody mute? Did you find it productive or did you like the session? Definitely, ma'am. It was a great uh, session, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Sandhya, ma'am. Sangeeta, ma'am. Asha, ma'am. Rita, nice. ma'am. Thanks for such a wonderful session with life. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Please fill this form, ma'am. All the, all the respected educators. And anyone who wants to uh, just uh, say anything? Shilpa, ma'am, you want to say? Thank you, Rupinda, ma'am. Thank you so much. Please fill that form. Thank you, Will Cause G. Thank you, Rupendra ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kavaljeet ma'am. Okay. Anyone, if you want to say a few words, uh, it will be teachers like, oh, thank you, Sangeeta ma'am. Thank you so much for, uh, for these kind words. Because I always try to update myself Every time I just keep on upgrading myself. Thank you so much for uh, your association. Uh, again, I have a session, I think two, three days after. And thank you so much for joining. And please fill this form, all the respected educators. Thank you so much.